Welcome everybody to a new demonstration uh, on uh, uh, the intraoral radiographic techniques. And in uh, this video, we are going to talk about the uh, intraoral uh, sensor holders. Uh, the intraoral sensor holders that we're going to talk about uh, are uh, actually uh, 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 two very common types used for the uh, 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 digital sensors. As you know that the digital sensors that are used in the dental practice are basically the uh, uh, direct sensor, which is the cable sensor that is connected to the <coughs> computer. Uh, and uh, you ca we can also use the uh, film, analog film, or very similar to it in terms of size and thickness, is the phosphor plates. However, their mode of action is different, but we will be using the uh, intraoral uh, analog films for purposes of demonstration, which are very much similar. This is size 1 and this is size 2. This is used for you know, it depends on the, uh, uh, according to the uh, size of the jaw that you're using and the uh, number of teeth which are present. These, the uh, the uh, digital set, the direct sensor that we're going to use is also size 1, which is the small size. If you compare it to the size 2, it's smaller in size in terms of coverage. And you can see that this is quite thick if, it, you, if you compare it to the uh, PSP plates. Uh, and if you want, you come back, go back to the videos that, uh, to the video that was made on the differences and the comparison between the two types of the sensors, whether they are the direct or the indirect. Okay, so without further ado, let's start with the uh, uh, use of these sensors, and I will start by the uh, use of the uh, 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 sensor which is used for the analog films or for the uh, uh, PSP uh, sensors which are the indirect sensors. This, the type that I'm going to use is called this SNAP-A-RAY, SNAP -ray, uh, X-ray sensor, uh, which is actually it's a very basic and simple device, if we, uh, or sometimes it is called as the alligator, uh, uh, alligator um, uh, holder because it's, it's very much similar to the alligator teeth to hold the fin in place. So uh, what we do here actually is that we are going to, uh, of course these are sterilizable, uh, it's, this one is made of plastic which resists, uh, I mean uh, uh, can be autoclaved and the other one is made of silicone and again it can resist uh, uh, frequent cycles and uh, different cycles of sterilization so you can use it <coughs> actually indefinitely. What we're going to do here is that we are going to uh, first of all of course this is as we said it uh, uh, comes sterilized uh, so you can uh, unpack it from the sterilization uh, pack and then you're going to place the film or the sensor with the exposure side facing the thick border uh, of the biter block. So if this is the back side of the sensor then the exposure side is going to be placed to, uh, di directed towards this area. And then you're going to place the uh, uh, sensor so that it, its lower border will be flush with the uh, uh, border of the biter block, as you can see over here, and then you're going to close on it, okay, close, and then you're going to lock the uh, sensor in a place so that it will be uh, held firmly into uh, its place. So, the, the placement is quite simple actually. It's, uh, all what you need to do is that you're going to place your exposure side of the sensor on the bite uh, on the uh, on the uh, those uh, uh, teeth like uh, 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 stabilizers of the bite block and then you're going to make it flush you know as you can see in here you you're going to just place it in a way so that it holds in in place and then you can see that the lower border of the uh, of the sensor is actually is coming quite uh, with the same border of the 
uh, of the byte block. And then you're going to slide the locker over here so that you keep uh, this in place. And this is how it's going to be placed. Now, the next thing, uh, of course, if you're using the, <coughs> excuse me, if you're using the, uh, this type of uh, uh, um, sensor, uh, this is going to be uh, wrapped uh, with a disposable cover. So regardless, uh, it's the same. It's going to uh, uh, hold in place. The next thing you're going to do is that you're going to uh, place this inside the oral cavity. The placement is really, it's not that complicated. I'm going to start with the upper premolars. So what you're going to do is that you ask your patient to open wide. And then what you're going to do is that you're going to place the sensor so that it will be behind the premolars as such. Okay. And then you are going to extend the uh, 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 bite block as much as you can go towards the midline so that it will be more comfortable for the patient. So you ask your patient to open and then you're going to uh, direct the uh, biting side or the bite block as much as you can towards the midline of the pellet and then you're going to ask your patient to bite on the bite block. Again, I will, I will place it here, see? And this is the final position. The biter block is actually uh, 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 with the margin of the teeth, and the sensor is pushed towards the midline as much as you, as you can. I will just rotate it from the back so that you can see the final relationship of the sensor towards the teeth. Okay, see? This is how it looks. Let me bring it closer that, so that you will have an idea. See, this is how it looks from the, uh, from the uh, buccal side. And the patient is biting on it. Okay. And then the, uh, from, uh, from inside, from the uh, inside of the, uh, uh, see the, relationship of the sensor to the tooth, they are almost in a, in a parallel uh, uh, relationship, okay? So, see the direction? It, you don't place it this way because it will be hard for the patient to bite, so you can push it as much as you can uh, in a uh, in a uh, 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 inward uh, <coughs> direction. Now, the next step that you're going to uh, uh, do is that you're going to direct the beam towards the, uh, uh, you're going to direct the beam towards the uh, 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 sensor. Then what you will do here is that you will bring the beam so that, first of all, you're going to, uh, all what you need to do is that you bring the beam and then make sure that the margin of the beam, a margin of the uh, sensor which is showing from here is located within the margin of the beam. Let me put it, let me uh, make it clear to you. So this is, the, this is what is appearing uh, from the sensor, right? What is appearing from the sensor is you make it flush with the outer margin of the cone so that you guarantee that the whole uh, the, that the whole uh, uh, sensor and, uh, uh, is covered and you have to do, okay, let, okay, I hope now you can see it. So the outer margin, outer margin of the, of the uh, bite block is flush with the outer margin of the cone so that I will guarantee maximum coverage and I don't have any concat. Next, you will stand in front of your patient and then you're going to direct the beam in either way so that you will make the outer ring or the outer rim of the uh, 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 cone parallel with the buccal surface of teeth so that you can guarantee that the, um, uh, 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 the you, you will get open contacts and there will be no overlapping. If you come from this direction, 
then you will have overlapping. If you come from this direction, you will be having overlapping. So all what you need to do is that, just imagine you are the dentist, okay? And uh, 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 try to make the beam perpendicular on the buccal surface of teeth. This is not perpendicular. I hope I can make it clear in front of the camera. This is not perpendicular. This is not perpendicular, and this is the beam is going to be perpendicular on the, buc uh, on the buccal surface of teeth, and the x-ray will be passing in between the uh, teeth, and thus you, thus you will guarantee that there will be no overlapping. Okay? Now, after you're done with the exposure, you will ask your patient to open, and then you will take the sensor out just the way you put it uh, 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 when you have started. If you're going to do, if you want to do the molars, then again you're going to ask your patient to open wide, and then the sensor is placed so that the second molar, the second molar will be in the uh, uh, in the center of the sensor to guarantee that all the teeth will be showing, all the molar teeth will be showing, and I will, I will, as I said, don't bring it closer to the, to, to the uh, to the teeth because the patient will not be able to uh, to bite. All what you need to do is that you push it as much as you can in a mid towards the midline, so that you will utilize the maximum curvature, uh, maximum concavity uh, of the palate. So what you do is that you, you place it, see, behind the second molar, and then you push it as much as you can go in a posterior direction and put it on the, poster on the upper teeth first. Don't put it on the lower, then ask your patient to close. It will be a bit, it will be annoying for the patient. So you place it on, your, on the second molar, okay, so that all the molar teeth will be showing, and then you will ask your patient to close on the uh, on the bite block, the same that we did with the uh, uh, with the with the, with the premolars. You can see here that the bite block again is the same line with the with the buccal surface of teeth. And from inwards, from inside, see the relationship of the sensor to the teeth. Okay, this is how it looks. Now, if you bring it more here. It will be, uh, remember I told you to uh, uh, push it, b here it will be difficult for the patient to bite. So try to push it the more, the farthest that you can go towards the midline so that you can utilize the uh, uh, concavity of, of, the, of the pellet and you, man, you can make it <coughs> uh, more comfortable for the patient to bite. And then you can catch the apex. See, if you put it on the second molar, the, you, you will see that the, uh, the sensor will cover all the molar teeth, starting from distal of the five to the uh, backside of the, or the distal surface of the seven. Next step is that we, we are going to direct the beam, and in direction of the beam, the, the, th the, the part which is showing from the, from the sensor holder is this part, which is only the anterior part. So what I will do, just like what I did with the premolars, um, I'm going to make this part fall within the outer margin of the, uh, 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 of the cone so that I will have a, a, a complete coverage. So what I will do, I will retract the cheek of the patient and then I will bring my cone so that this margin falls within the outer margin of the cone and provided it better be in the middle, in this way, in this relationship. So this, this margin which is showing over here, which is the only margin uh, 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 showing, okay, this, this one, I will make it like uh, in, in this relationship. And try to make it in the, try to put it in the, try to put it in the uh, 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 middle. This part should be in the middle of the cone, so that you will guarantee that the whole, part, the whole sensor will be uh, covered. Now, if you if you go in front, you will have a concat. If you or you direct your beam up, uh, you will have concat. If you will direct it down, you will be having a concat. So the best thing you do is that this margin, which is showing of the, of the uh, uh, 
uh, from the cheek, you will put it within the outer rim of the uh, uh, um, of the uh, comb. Okay, let us go back and place it uh, uh, in the same manner. See, I'll put it on behind the molars, and then put a, a push it towards the midline, and then ask the patient to bite. Then, I'll I'll uh, uh, to direct the beam, I'll. Uh, uh, align the this showing margin of the biter block with the outer rim one and I'll p try to put it in the middle no up no down no uh, uh, b b b b back and front and the next thing I'm going to stand in front of the patient make sure that the x-ray beam will be perpendicular uh, on the uh, on the bite on the buccal surface of teeth okay just break it uh, as such. Make it perpendicular on the buccal surface of teeth. Here you will be having a short image. Here you will be having an elongated image. If you tilt it towards one side, then you will have an overlapping margins. Just like we did with the premolars, and the premolars, the whole, th the whole story is repeated, except that the two premolars are uh, biting uh, on the biter block, and then I'm going to see you're in front of the patient. All what you need to do is that you put your cone perpendicular on the buccal surface of the upper premolars so that you guarantee that the uh, cone and the teeth are parallel. If you direct it to either side, then you will be having a cone cut and your free margin of the, uh, uh, of the sensor will be contained within the uh, lower border of the, uh, with the outer border of the um, uh, 